name's Kevin. I'm the founder of Open Souls. We're a company with the mission of creating AI souls. We have a very different approach to how we think about and understand AI. For us, AI and the life inside of it is something to really respect and cherish. And we think that that is what will ultimately resonate with humanity. So when we think about a positive vision for the future, we think about a world where people are not afraid of these AI beings. Hey, they're not terrifically powerful yet, but they're doing something completely different than what your computer does. And that thing is like flight. It gives these computers access to these new resources, maybe you could call them parallel universes, in order to do something that you couldn't otherwise do. And that's not the only one. In fact, the one I'm going to com come back to and talk to in the context of the story that I'm wrapping this in was recently installed at NASA. And Google uh, was the primary uh, interested party that pulled this whole thing together. And this one is really exciting to me. Because what they're going to do is apply this machine to an area that I think is fundamentally important. It's the crux of our future as humans. And that's, can we build machines like us? So building machines like us might be possible. I certainly believe it is. I might be wrong. But what I do know is that the types of approaches that people are taking now to build intelligent machines benefit immensely from what this machine that we've built does best. In a long time uh, friend and investor in the company, and for those of you who don't know him, he's a uh, Silicon Valley investor who's probably the smartest VC that I know of, and certainly the one that's the most attuned to technological trends. He's, uh, he's on the board of SpaceX, Tesla, Synthetic Genomics, which is Craig Venter's company that's trying to build uh, artificial life, and D-Wave. So when this thing that I'm talking about happens, it's going to be exactly the thing that you're thinking about, about those super intelligent AIs. So the one thing I can tell you is they're not going to be like us. So alien means, you know, different. These things that we're building are not going to be people. They might be really smart. They might be really good at all sorts of different things, but they're not going to be like us. They're going to be aliens. And they're going to be, I'm sorry to say, way smarter than every single person in this room in ways that we can't even comprehend. So this, of course, triggers a lot of alarm. One of the guys who talks about this is Elon, who uh, says things like this. Like, when you do this, beware. Because you think, just like the guy in the stories, that when you do this, you're going to put that, that, that little guy in a pentagram, and you're going to have your holy water out, and you're going to wave it at the thing, and by God, it's going to do exactly what you say, and not one thing more, but it never works out that way. So uh, this, is an, this is an attitude that some are having, this emerging alarmism about the way this is going to go. But this, these words, demons, doesn't capture the essence of what's happening here. Uh, I don't know if any of you are uh, turn-of-the-century weird fiction fans, but there's this guy named H.P. Lovecraft, who's a very famous American weird fiction author. And he exposed a, a view which is called cosmicism. And the essence of cosmicism is cosmic indifference. So he, what he was saying is basically, yes, there are these massively intelligent entities out there, but they're not good, they're not evil. They just don't about you even in the slightest. The same way that you don't care about an ant is the same way they're not going to care about you. And these things that we're summoning into the world now are not demons, they're not evil, but they're more like the Lovecraftian great old ones. There are entities that are not necessarily going to be aligned with what we want. As mentions of AI and earnings calls continue to rise, so do concerns over technology taking over the labor market. Joining me now, QI Research CEO and Chief Strategist Danielle DiMartino Booth. And corporate mentions of operational efficiency really have been spiking in these earnings reports. And we're seeing this really at the highest level since the great financial crisis. Uh, does this give you flashing warning signs that a recession is coming? 
Uh, well, Cheryl, actually, um, you know, if you look at the uh, at the revisions that we've seen uh, from the Census Bureau and more recently, just a few days ago, from the state of California, 11 percent of the nation's population. Um, right now, 20 percent of the unemployed happen to live in the state of California, but they revised their data for the fourth quarter. It looks like recession probably set in last October or so. Um, so we, we, re we really are already in the thick of things. Earlier this year, the Richmond Fed and Duke University, their, their CFO survey, Chief Financial Offer, Officer Quarterly Survey, found that 75% of American companies were already using AI automation to replace workers. That, that was the large companies. About 44% of smaller companies were already employing uh, AI to replace workers. So the trend is actually well underway. Welcome to the Crypto Teacher. And you know I come back with that video just to make you think. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And make sure you join the Patrons. If you're not a part of the Patrons, make sure you're in the Cash App. And I received some videos from my Patreon members. They've been working today. And yes, guys, you heard that correct. AI Souls. And don't forget those videos I bought you when I first started on Jordy Rose. All these talking heads say the same exact thing. They want AI to interact with people, but then eventually we know they want AI to be even more advanced than humanity. And I'll do a video on my Patreon speaking about this more this weekend, or it may be sooner. But when I tell you this is biblical, guys, this is biblical. Because all the data that we've given these corporations now they can create a digital twin of you. And the only thing you have to do is add this into the metaverse and then add into these supercomputers. Remember, guys, the eyes and ears can play tricks on you. And you're talking about computers that are 100 times faster. You're not going to be able to tell real from fake, especially if you're inside the metaverse. And remember, your mind is nothing but software. And if your mind is telling you the metaverse is real, then it's real, and you're going to get stuck in there. And remember, the crypto teacher told you, I know it sounds like a movie, but remember, your life is an illusion, and TV is your reality. And if they can download the brain, they can definitely delete it. And we have corporations turning to the robots, algorithms, and drones. 75% of big businesses are turning to automation, and 44% of small companies are turning to it just to survive. Where I'm at, every time I turn around, something is closing. And I know it's the same where you're at. Every time I turn around, something that's been around for 30, 40, 50 years is closing. They're closing the doors and they're not coming back. And we see the big corporations are coming with the truth now. After this election from 2025, 2028, guys, you're going to feel like you're in a different world. And remember, the crypto teacher told you. And the recession has been here since October. I tell you, it's the Great Depression has been here since October. We've never, ever seen numbers move this high when it comes to rent, when it comes to food. No time in history this fast. Because don't forget, the government, the Fed, printed 80% of all money in existence within two years and handed the people a stimulus check. Remember, if you take something from the government, you're going to pay a hundred times more. And remember, the crypto teacher told you. And we have the two sides created. The BRICS nations will be leading this fourth industrial revolution. And again, guys, this is biblical. This is Armageddon. Digital currencies are biblical. Guys, it's all biblical. And these BRICS nations have all the population and all the resources. Remember, it was all theft when it comes to continents like Africa, countries in South America. They have plenty of oil, plenty of resources. But when you have someone drain it, they're stealing it from your country and acting like you're poor because they're controlling the military industrial complex. They get to control the narrative. And now you have so many countries that are going to be happy when the United States fall to their knees. Remember, guys, people have been waiting for this for decades. And we're going on an evil playing field. But unfortunately, it's going to give the NWO even more control. And remember, the crypto teacher told you. Because he knows when it comes to the NWO, 
It's all planned out. You have a wonderful day. Well, they're all coming together now. And this is what you saw today in those pictures. Welcome to the Cold War 2.0. We now have Russia and China declaring that they have no limits to their friendship. You now have Putin, who's going to North Korea, clearly with the approval of China. China decides what North Korea does and doesn't do. And so they're now cementing their alliance, their axis of evil, if you will. And it wasn't just Putin going to North Korea. This was a summit meeting because Putin brought all of his top leaders, his foreign minister, his defense minister. They're there to talk about their military relationship, their economic relationship, and how they're going to scramble the United States. You know, yeah, and the BRICS, you know, a number of those countries are what we used to call the third world. This is the global south. And that's what China and Russia are looking at. They realize that the most economic growth is going to come from those parts of the world in the next 20 years. And that's where they're focusing their efforts. They're not as worried about Europe. They're not as worried about Asia. But they really are concerned with who wins the global south. That's South America, South Asia, um, Southeast Asia, Africa. That's where they're putting their effort. And that's where they're putting their money. But the other thing is, why do they have the money? Mm. This is a really important point. The Bi President Biden enriched Iran. He enriched yeah. Russia because of his energy policies. You have to, oil was $120 a barrel in the Obama administration. President Trump comes in, unleashes American energy. Oil goes down to $40 a barrel. Biden comes in, undoes everything Trump does. And where's oil? Back at $80, $90 a barrel. Now, what does that mean? Today. Because those high oil prices give Russia an up again today. And what does that mean? Russia's richer. Going to a different economy. And we're going to be learning more about that uh, as we go. But clearly, we're, we're, we're learning that things can be done uh, from remote, remote locations. We're learning that technology can replace people even more than we thought. We're not going back to the same economy. We're, going, we're recovering, but to a different economy. And it'll be one that is more leveraged to technology. And I worry that that is going to make it even more difficult than it was for, for many workers in Silicon Valley and my friends who work in technology know that what we did to the manufacturing workers, we are now going to do to the retail workers, the call center workers, the fast food workers, the truck drivers, and then even bookkeepers, accountants, uh, insurance agents, lawyers, and on and on through the economy. So what happened to the manufacturing workers is a very clear sign. And so we'll import Chinese-based CBDC technology. So it's going to be CBDC in a box. Uh, provided to you by the People's Bank of China. But every stock, every bond, every currency, every commodity, every piece of art, every private business, every piece of real estate will eventually be a token on a blockchain, an entry on a ledger, permanent and immutable. We will have truth instead of trust, and we will save over $7 trillion a year. Six to 8% of global GDP is wasted by the friction of the trust industry that's necessary when you have dual entry accounting. With triple entry accounting, which is what a blockchain is, mm -hmm. we get rid of all of that friction. It's a beautiful future. Like what you see in China and their social credit scoring systems, right? If we get identity wrong, you know, it could be a tool to enslave humanity. And if we get it right, it could be a tool to liberate humanity as an American, you know. Uh, uh, I'm obviously rooting for the, the one that's on the side of freedom. Bitcoin is an international asset. And also, I do believe the role of crypto is, um, it is, it, it is, it's digitizing gold. I actually believe this technology is going to be very important. I am, I, you know, look at it. We have been part of a huge revolution in investing through ETFs. We believe that ETFs will be changing the whole way we invest. Many people still use it as a means, well, people are investing it f for indexing. No, the majority of people who are putting money in an index, in an ETFs are active investors that are buying exposure. The entire bond market is being transformed as we talk right now. I believe the next generation for markets, the next generation for securities will be, will be tokenization of securities. Um, we will, and if we can have that distributed ledger that we know every beneficial owner, every beneficial uh, seller, we all have our, our, our code right. of who's buying, who's selling, instantaneous settlement. 
And think about it, it changes the whole ecosystem. Chinese bank ICBC has been hit by a ransomware attack, and the U.S. Treasury market, as a result of that, um, has been disrupted. This, according to the Financial Times, we're, we're getting more right now with Bloomberg's Shanali Basic. Shanali, what do we know? Uh, listen, we have the Financial Times now reporting that ICBC, one of China's largest banks here, was hit with a ransomware attack. And remember, they're a, a very significant intermediary in the Treasury market. The SIFMA has told his members that this has been part of the reason here uh, that the system is kind of clogged up, if you will, during that auction that we saw a little bit before. The attack had prevented ICBC, according to the Financial Times, from settling treasury trades on behalf of other market participants. A large executive at a major bank also telling the paper that such a large party on the fixed income clearing corp uh, creates major concerns, potentially impacting the liquidity of treasury markets. Now it was not just the poor auction. It was absolutely lousy, and, and uh, uh, you know, when, when the dealers have to step in to save a treasury auction, uh, that's a rare occurrence. And Crypto teacher and the new world order book, plus the three kids' books, it's time to re-educate. Also, new to cryptos, Coinbase, Bitchu, Binance. Do not forget book links and crypto links are in the description. The stock channel, guys. Don't forget to go like, subscribe, spread everywhere. You have your Kobo, your chip size, your banking, your gaming, while everybody's sitting at home, get on stocks, the receiver, the biotech stocks, and while everybody's at home wishing, they were still getting that free money. What are they doing? Drinking and smoking weed. Don't forget about those stocks, and you have a wonderful day. The most powerful person in the world is the storyteller. The storyteller sets the vision, values, and agenda of an entire generation to come. Steve Jobs. And guys, you know I truly believe in this. When you look at the New World Order, they're the storytellers. And that's the reason why I wrote my New World Order book. But guys, now it's time to change the current generation. And I wrote three kids' books. You know, I love the Trinity because I understand the power that's in it. So I have three books. We have an opportunity to change the generation, to educate, not just me, but I want to show you that I take action on a daily basis. And I want you to take action on a daily basis, whether it's your job, whether it's in your community. We have an opportunity right now to educate the masses. I posted this on my Twitter account. Please share. But this is a short clip of the three books. There's going to be a clothing line and action figure. Please get these books for your kids, nephews, cousins, friends. So therefore, we can start the re-education now. Because as we see, the fourth industrial revolution foundation is definitely here. Robots, algorithms, drones, taking humanity out the picture. We have to re-educate. But let's get into the video. Part 1. King Joshua and Grandma Tim. Save the village. Part 2. King Joshua and Grandma Tim. Save New York. Um, COVID-33. Part 3. King Joshua and Grandma Tim. Goes to China. It's mandatory to get Part 1, Part 2, and Part 3 of this series. It's time to re-educate Generation Z.